Dave VE3KCL and I have been working on high altitude ballooning for more than four years. Dave was initially using the Ultimate 3S Beacon Whisper transmitter kit but in a very small version initially installed on an Arduino Nano. Uh, from there we progressed to smaller and smaller and lighter transmitters which got higher and therefore missed more weather and flew for longer. So far the combination of those was uh, what we call the U3B balloon de tracker development which will hopefully eventually become a QRP Labs product. This is the U3B25 flight weighing 2.66 grams for the uh, transmitter board. Uh, you see here a GPS uh, Atmega 328 processor, the same one used in the Ultimate 3S and many other QRP Labs products. and an SI5351 synthesizer as the transmitter and also an LM75 temperature sensor. Here's another photo. Uh, for the GPS antenna Dave's just using a very simple dipole antenna. The HF antenna is a half wave dipole with the transmitter just suspended in the middle. We had some very small solar panels and bring the total weight to almost 5 grams. Tracking uses Whisper, the weak signal propagation reporter, but not ordinary Whisper. Ordinary Whisper only transmits four characters of location and nothing else, so not really enough. So we transmit an additional uh, packet which is described here, a special Whisper telemetry protocol which encodes the fifth and sixth maidenhead characters and the battery voltage, speed and altitude and GPS satellite status as well as the temperature and battery voltage all into an additional whisper packet. This enables us to get back quite detailed telemetry. This is the first day of the U3B25 flight showing some of the ascent to just around 11,000 meters. Plotting on the graph we see the altitude, ground speed, temperature and battery voltage. As the flight goes on, here you can see uh, day 9, you build up uh, quite an interesting pattern of all the telemetry showing every day. The flight only transmits during daylight hours because it has a small uh, battery which is nowhere near sufficient to power it during the night. Of course also very interesting, perhaps most interesting, is the location and this is plotted onto a Google map. Um, you can see here the launch from Toronto the first lap is the blue line, followed by the second lap is the red line, and so on, until it had completed almost 10 laps around the world, flying for 4 months and 25 days, so almost a 5 month flight at an altitude of around 11,000 meters, completing a total distance of over 400,000 kilometers. And during this time, the transmitter, with its output power of about 10 milliwatts, was copied by hundreds of stations, whisper stations around the world, thousands of whisper spots, and distance co covering thousands or tens of thousands of kilometers. So it's a really amazing from the communications perspective. This little transmitter contains an AVR, an 8 bit AVR processor, Atmega 328, which has got inside it a 32 bit virtual machine that runs a basic program. So unlike the Ultimate 3S, which is fixed configured and you configure the transmissions you want, in this U3B development you write a small basic program which controls the flight and provides a lot more flexibility. Now this is a picture of the latest tracker which we are calling the U4B. This is a development on from the U3B maintaining the same principles of a virtual machine running basic, but now the processor has been changed to the STM32 family. Uh, these are a 32-bit ARM processor and have a lot more power, memory, flexibility and peripherals such as the USB peripheral that the AVRs don't have unless you go into a much more expensive and powerful AVR chip. The price of the ST chips is also very low. This one has on, on the top here a micro USB socket and so it supports programming directly without any type of uh, interface any kind of USB to serial data converter or anything like that. You just need a serial cable to connect directly to the PC. 
Just like its predecessors, it has on board a small GPS and the uh, SI5G51A transmitter LM75 temperature sensor. It also now has a larger EEPROM because the STM32 chips do not contain EEPROM on board and we need somewhere to store the program. So I've connected here to the U4B with a terminal emulator. I'm using PuTTY on Linux, but you could equally well use any terminal emulator on Windows, Linux, Mac, it doesn't matter, any terminal emulator. So the idea here is to make it very easy to use without requiring any special software on the PC or any special hardware to connect to it. All you need is a micro USB cable. We've also made it very easy to use so that if you don't want to use BASIC or do any of that all you need to do is enter your call sign and the transmission frequency and you can use the tracker without any BASIC programming whatsoever. So when you first power up you see here the run program and debug program sections are red that's because it says here an error message fixed configuration errors. So let's go into the configuration screen and fix that. So here we'll come into the configuration screen and you can see that I have a place to enter the call sign here and the transmission frequency. So I put my call sign and as soon as you've entered a valid whisper call sign that satisfies the protocol rules it goes yellow. Now if I enter a frequency within the whisper band um, it will also go yellow to indicate that's all fine. You'll see here a channel ID. I've got channel 52. Channel IDs are assigned from 150 channels randomly and that's fixed to your device. It shows here the telemetry format of the telemetry the second whisper packet and what the call sign will look like. So you'll see that my first character is 1 and my third character is 0 and the other characters, the X characters, are all uh, other characters that carry the telemetry. It also shows the start minute of the transmission which will be 6 minutes past the hour and 16 minutes, 26 minutes, 36 minutes on that schedule. So now if I come out of this window you'll see that the red has disappeared and I'd now be able to run the program. So first just have a quick look at the program. If you go into view program then you have no danger of changing anything accidentally and you'll see that the default program just contains three very simple program lines. The first line labeled line 10 is GPS 240 which switches on the GPS and runs it with a timeout of 4 minutes 240 seconds. Switching on the GPS gets the altitude, the position, and it also calibrates the system oscillators, so that's the 8 MHz system clock and the 27 MHz reference clock for the SI5351A. You need those calibrated so that you have accurate transmission frequency and timing. The next line, Tele, transmits two whisper packets. The first one is standard whisper, the second one contains the additional information as described earlier. And finally, the third line, go to 10, just starts again, uh, and so the program just repeats itself over and over. Now if you want to test running the program, come into the run window. As soon as I press this, you see it opens up a window where it starts here on the first line getting the information from the GPS. The information displayed here shows the number of satellites being received, 9, number used in the calculation which is 9, and the signal to noise ratio. This counter that you see here goes from 240, the first line uh, timeout, down to zero and when it reaches zero the program will proceed regardless of the fact that it doesn't have a 3D fix. In practice that wouldn't happen. So once it's got the uh, locator, the six character maidenhead locator and the altitude, um, it continues the next line. My altitude here, I'm quite close to the sea so the altitude is uh, very low, I'm quite low down near sea level so it shows us one meter. Then it's moved on to the next line, ready to start transmitting the whisper, but it's going to wait for minute 6, minutes past the hour, so in this case it's going to wait for 5.46 before it will start transmitting whisper.
So that really shows you the default program and the complete flight transmitter that's required. You'd never need to go into BASIC to see that. All you'd need to do is go in here in the configuration and put in your call sign and the transmission frequency and the rest would just happen. But if you want to do a much more complex flight, come here into Edit Program. And what you have here is a full screen text editor, which is all hosted on the STM32 microcontroller chip, controlled from there. Again, there's no special software running on the PC here, it's just a terminal emulator, and everything is being controlled from the uh, microcontroller on the U4B. So we have a full featured BASIC implemented here, and it includes uh, if statements, it includes print statements. Print just prints to the debug terminal. Of course, when you're flying, you won't have this, but you've got access to all kinds of variables. Uh, BT is the battery voltage. You've got uh, temperature, which is TK. You've got altitude, and for example, uh, altitude is AT. You've got 26 variables uh, labeled A to Z. So if we said let A equal AT, that will copy the altitude into variable A. We could then print variable A if we want. We've got if statements, so we can say if A is less than 5,000, uh, do something. So we might, for example, want to transmit using CW uh, in that case. Um, I should say that this doesn't just transmit whisper, it can also transmit CW JT9, JT65, uh, Hellschreiber, and all the weak signal QRSS modes as well. So it inherits most of the mode functionality from the Ultimate 3S transmitter. The capability to do if statements based on altitude could be, for example, used to transmit your location in CW much more frequently and to a higher resolution if the uh, balloon came down below 5,000 meters. You can also access all of the position information, so you could do geofencing, which means you'd want to change the behavior of the balloon depending on whereabouts in the world it's flying over. All of these things are possible using the BASIC because you've got full flexibility. You also have nine general purpose output pins which you can control to any voltage you like. So for example, if I type 5 out 5 1, that will set output pin 5 to 3.3 volts high voltage. If I set out 5 0, that will set it to a low voltage. You can also read the input from the pin. So I could say let B equal in 6, and that would read the uh, signal level on pin 6 as a 0 or a 1 depending on whether it's a high voltage or low voltage and you can also use analog voltages on any of those input channels so you could say let C equal in A set 8 for example now that's reading the analog voltage from pin 8 there's a 12-bit a analog to digital converter on each pin so the value that's read will be between 0 and 4095 depending on the voltage from 0 to 3.3 volts. The LM75 temperature sensor and the SI5351A are connected on an I2C bus and you can actually also read and write to the I2C bus using the I2CR command to read and I2CW command to write. So you can control other I2C peripherals if you connected things like a temperature sensor or additional uh, or a pressure sensor you can control those as well in addition to the onboard temperature sensor that's already there. Line numbers could be on any line. If you want to have a line number, it doesn't matter. If you don't, you don't have to have a line number. The only real reason why you'd need a line number is when you use the go to statement or the go, su go sub statement for subroutines. So it's a full featured uh, basic and uh, I haven't described all of it here, it will all be thoroughly documented of course, but you can see how, how it goes. When you've finished editing you can do Control S to save it and it says here at the bottom 147 characters of text have been written. But now when I press Control Q and come out you'll see that the uh, run program, debug program are again uh, read 
indicating an error. The error is written at the bottom here that the program is not compiled. So this is not just a basic interpreter. This this system also has a basic compiler which it, it allows you to uh, parse and validate that the basic program is correct before running it. It also compresses it considerably compared to uh, text as well as makes it run faster. So to compile it I do control C and that will tell me if successful how many bytes have been written. Uh, if it's not successful, for example, if I have some line here which is just nonsense, it will show me the error and where the error occurs and highlight it. So I can then remove that and compile again. So 93 bytes have been written of executable and now when I do control Q you can see that I can run the program and debug the program as usual. Before I show you the running of uh, the debugger I will show you the hardware test screen. This window allows you to check that all of the elements of the hardware on the U4B are running correctly. So it shows you the SI53518 transmitter test here is running properly. The LM75 temperature sensor here shows fail because on my development but version of the of the uh, U4B I haven't installed the temperature sensor so that's why it's showing fail. It also shows the battery voltage around f just under 5 volts. That's because I'm powering here from USB. All of this information here comes from the GPS. So it shows again number of satellites being tracked and not number in the position fix, signal to noise ratio. It shows longitude, latitude, the locator. And then down at the bottom here you see nine general purpose IO pins and their state. The number here is the analog state of the pin between 0 and 4095. None of these pins are connected to anything in my example here, so they're just randomly moving about a bit from sample to sample every one second. In square brackets here it shows the digital value on the pin. Um, 0 means less than the midrail and 1 means above the midrail. So this hardware test screen is quite useful for checking that everything's working properly. Now there was one thing also I wanted to add here. Uh, to the program which was a for loop just to demonstrate that as well for e equals 1 to 10 print e next e so all that adds is a loop with the e variable going from 1 to 10 Ah, now when I compiled, you see it gave me a syntax error here. That's because I've forgotten that my next statement should not include the variable name, it should just be next like that. So now when I compile, it's now successfully written. Now coming back here into the debugger, what you see here if you're familiar with programming and a full development environment on a PC, you have the program window and then you have variables and uh, an output window. So we have here a very simplified version of a development environment and remember again, this is all hosted on the STM32 processor chip, it's not doing anything with any special software on a PC, just a terminal emulator. So you have here a variables output that shows the most recently used variables and an output window which shows the output of the print statements and various, various other statement information. So now I've got three things I can do. I can quit or I can step through the program one line at a time or I can run the program uh, freely. So I'm going to do the stepping and you can see when I press S first the yellow the line becomes yellow indicating it's running and the output is shown here of the GPS statement and when it's finished it will show me the uh, locator and the altitude it's now reading as zero meters as I said I'm quite close to sea level here and the most recent line is colored yellow the next line to be executed here is uh, colored white now you'll see as I press step again, it prints the value of the BT variable, which is the battery voltage in millivolts, uh, so it's 4.89 volts, and it also shows the most recently ver accessed variables, with the one most recently accessed being yellow in the most recent line uh, up here. And as I step through the program, here it is showing temperature, which is reading zero in my case, because I have no temperature sensor connected or installed on this development board. Altitude again is zero because I'm close to sea level, but you can see that the most recently used 10 variables are listed up here, uh, sorted in order of when they were last accessed. Now I can print A, uh, that shows uh, the 
a variable value which is also zero um, the if statement will be executed here because the altitude is less than five meters and now it will loop through the for statement which why I wanted to show you this is because if I move the cursor down to here for example I can now press run and it will run freely through the program until the executed line reaches the cursor so I'm pressing R and you can see it's running through it's, it's printing out one line at a time until it comes to the cursor where it stops so now I can step again and you can see I'm reading in the value of the pin 6 and then printing it reading in pin 8 I got the value 2065 because now I'm reading it as an analog and coming finally to the telemetry transmission which here is going to wait for 556 because it's transmitting starting at 6 minutes past the hour and every 10 minutes thereafter so that's the debugger and you can see that you've got a huge amount of flexibility of uh, being able to program this miniature flying computer to do whatever you like during the flight if you want to but as I said if you don't want to then all you need to do is configure the call sign and the frequency and use the default program that's installed you can always get back to the default situation by doing a factory reset and, and that just wipes out the entire configuration and the program and installs that very simple default three-line program to start with the update firmware option here at the bottom has not yet been implemented that's why it's blue um, it when it is implemented it will allow updating the firmware on the u4b over the uh, micro usb cable again without requiring any programming hardware or any programming software it'll all be done just from the terminal after the U3B25 flight, or I should say during the U3B25 flight, Dave also launched several more balloons. Um, the best of these was the U3B28 flight, which ran for one month and six days, travelling 60,000 kilometres. It completed a whole lap of the world rather slowly, because uh, in the uh, summer months, the jet stream is far less direct, and it, you get these uh, circles in the flight path come up. Uh, the next flight will hopefully be a U4B test flight and we hope to very soon after that progress towards uh, uh, full production of the U4B. The U4B tracker board will actually be much smaller than the board that you see here. This is a development board which is uh, created for hand assembly so the final factory produced version will actually be smaller and the components will be on both sides of the board. Smaller means lighter and that makes it easier to get to a higher altitude which is very important to get above the weather so that you can last as long as possible. So the U4B is hopefully uh, coming soon and we're aiming for a production uh, retail price of below $50 which will make it uh, by far the cheapest and most flexible Whisper HF tracker uh, available. So thanks for watching. Uh, this will make hopefully it possible for uh, a lot of people who don't want to develop their own hardware and software to run these exciting long distance balloon flights. Um, if you can get anywhere near <laughs> Dave's U3B25 flight, uh, that's amazing and, and a great thrill to, to watch and to experience. Thanks for watching.